just used, I've even used black thread, how naughty is that? You push it all back in again, push it into those corners. Hi, I'm Tree and this is Stitchless TV. And today on Stitchless TV, we are going to make a fantastic, have a look, glitzy bum bag. The brilliant thing about this bum bag is you can just wear it in so many different ways. Look, you can wear it, so I can wear it like that, as a little handbag, which I think is really great, or you could just take off the ties altogether and have it just as a regular purse. This is what we need to make a fancy bum bag. We need two rectangles, one accent rectangle, 27 centimetres long by 20 wide, and one leather or fake leather, 27 centimetres long by 20 wide. We need a six inch zip, which is 15 centimetres, four little D-rings, some long piece of tape, can't remember what it's called, what's it called? Buckram, which is going to be the belt, and we've got a surprise lining, a vintage scarf. And don't forget your sewing machine. And remember, because these tutorials are so easy, I'm using a little kitty mini JL. So first of all, I'm going to cut the lining out of the vintage scarf. So I'm gonna decide which picture. I, I like using the tourism scarves because they have gorgeous little stories and pictures on them. So I'm going to choose which one I want. So I've got this one here. I'm going to place right sides down my actual square from the bag, rectangle from the bag, and I'm just tracing around it. And I'm cutting exactly the same size out of the scarf, which is going to be my lining. And I've got two pieces folded together. Okay, so I end up with two bits. For the D-rings, I've got two little pieces of leather like this and you slot them in because you're going to have two of those, one on each side. The first thing that we need to do is to put the zip in. Now on the accent, I'm going to start on the accent side. I'm going to put the zip the right sides together with the fabric and I'm going to undo it just a little bit and then just take it to the machine. Now if you're using a regular machine, you can just use a zipper foot so that it goes really close to the zip. But in using the mini JL machine, it's got a big foot on it. So we're going to do a zigzag just to hold it in place. So I'll do that now on F. So you've got to get the lining and you're going to put it right sides together and you're going to do zigzag on that as well because that's going to be like a little bit slippery. So I do exactly the same thing, put it in place and I'm zigzagging close to the edge. <laughs> So you should end up with something like this. So now I'm gonna go in with a straight stitch. I just did the zigzag just to hold it in place because I hate pins. So turn it to D and go in with a straight stitch. So what you end up with is this. And what happens is it all gets pressed back and becomes a gorgeous lining that peeps on the other side. So now we need to do the other side of the zip. So you do exactly the same thing on the other side. So now we're putting the leather on the other side. So same thing, exactly the same thing. Undo your zip a little bit, put it right sides together. Now the important bit here is that you line it up exactly the same position as you did on your accent side. So there it's a little bit longer. So this one needs to be a bit longer than the zip as well. So going in on zigzag, which is F on my machine, and I just do exactly the same thing. Now, when you get to the open zip, because it's quite bulky, and I can't change the feet on these machines. All that I have to do is undo that zip so it goes past where I'm sewing and then put it back down and then off you go. That's what we've got. That's what we've got so far, but we've only zigzagged it so we haven't straight stitched. So do you remember what we do next? Can you remember what we do next? We put the lining on. So we get the lining right sides together on top of that zip look so that's what we've done so now we're on the other side of the zip here we've got right sides together 
and we put it on using zigzag which is just to hold it in place so look we've done the other side open it out and we're just gonna see look that's what we've got now it's all in place we just do straight stitch so don't forget to move that zip out of the way. Now this is what I'm talking about. See that great big bulky bit there? Because we're not using a zipper fit foot. We need to get it out of the way. So I'm going to undo it a bit so that I can sew a bit more down. And then I'll get to a point where I'm near it again. So I need to lift the foot up and close the zip now. Where is it? Is it there? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. So now I've just got to press the fabric away from the zip. What I would say is for the fake leather side, you can't actually, well you probably can, but just to be on the safe side, don't press directly on top of the fake leather because you might melt it. So you need a tea towel to go on top. So I'm gonna go and get a tea towel. <laughs> so I'm pressing, when I press the leather, whenever I do any pressing on the leather, I'm putting a tea towel on top just to be on the safe side. Look, isn't it lovely? This is when I start to get really excited. So you've got to determine where you're going to put your D-rings. Okay, so what, the way we're going to do that is we're going to put the bag how it will be when it's done. So that will fold over like that, just sort of flaps over, you see. And so therefore, I want my D-rings to fall just beneath where that fold is there. So I'm going to have two lots, one on each side, like that so that means whoops that means that you've got to put them this way round at that point there and you're only going to stitch them you're only going to stitch it to that accent fabric to the lurex bit so I'm going to do that straight away using a zigzag stitch so that I don't have to use those horrible pins So I've put my D-rings on, I used a zigzag stitch because I just want to keep them in place but because it's tricky to sew because of the fake leather, the zigzag stitch, I don't know, it seems to be easier to do. So now what we have to do is we're going to get the leather, we're going to fold it over so we have right sides together and we're going to sew all the way down on one side, all the way down on the other side, and then across the bottom using a straight stitch. Two top tips. Remember to undo your zip so you, you can turn it around. So undo it about halfway. And now you see these bits of the zips, you don't want them folded that way down. You want them folded away from the accent lurex side. So I'm folding them away and I'm pushing the lining away so the zip bits are away and lining everything up and then I'm going to start sewing. Now whenever you go over a thick bit, I'm going over a thick bit of zip using my mini JL machine, I'm going to ha do it by hand. You can just turn the wheel if you're worried about going over thick fabric and breaking your needle, just do it all by hand, turning the wheel only towards you though. So we're past that now so the next bit of thick fab fabric will be where we've got our D-ring. So I can go straight all the way to the D-ring. No problem at all. And now I've got to the double layer of uh, fake leather on the D-ring. I'm just going to go by hand a little bit just to help it. But it seems to be fine. And then go all the way to the end. So I've, do I've done one side. Now we're going to do the other side. Now I do one side at a time just to make sure it's aligned properly at the bottom. So do you remember we push those bits of zips away so we need to do the same on the other side otherwise it will end up being a twisted zip. So look they're pushed up and away and then they're ready to sew. So we've gone down both sides and the reason why we did it that way is sometimes when you sew coming down on the other side it goes a bit ski whiffy at the bottom so you can sort of ease it out a bit. So now that's ready for me to go right across the bottom, so I do that. I've gone all the way down the sides, across the bottom. Now what I'd say is you, it'd be a good idea to just mitre your corners, which is to cut off the points, so that when you turn it around, it's nice and neat in the corners. All you have to do now is stitch the lining. Now when you stitch the lining, very, very important, 
you have to leave a gap to turn it through. So have a look and I'll show you where we're going to be sewing for the lining. We're just going to sew all the way down and come in about an inch, then do the same on the other side, come in about an inch because we need a big hole to turn the whole bag through. I'm doing the lining, I'm going past that thick bit so I'm using the wheel on the side to help me through the thick bit and straight stitch all the way down. I nearly forgot to do the little bit at the bottom so I'm just stitching along the bottom about an inch which is two centimetres ish and I'm remembering to leave a gap to turn it through. So now I'm just going to stitch down on the other side remembering to come in about an inch at the bottom but leaving a big hole. This is the hole that we turn it through. So you put your hand in hopefully you remembered excuse me hopefully you remember to leave that zip open because if you didn't you're in trouble so the first thing we need to do is to poke out these corners use your nail to sort of poke in the corners actually not poke out the corners so I'm doing those first so I'm poking them in and then I'm going to hold on to them to pull it all through so you can't see what's going on I know you just take my word for it, but I've grabbed hold of those corners and I'm pulling them through a rather small hole. But can you see it coming? It's coming through. <gasps> Look at that gorgeousness. So it's all coming through. Then poke out your corners on the top. I've forgotten something. You've got to stitch up that hole. You've got to stitch up the hole first. So the way to stitch up the hole, you don't need to do it by hand because nobody's going to see it. You just, oh, you just put them together and then just do a little top stitch on top of there. So I'm going to do that now on the machine. So you can hand sew it, but look, I've just used, I've even used black thread. How naughty is that? You push it all back in again, push it into those corners, and you love it. So I'm going to go and press it now with my tea towel on top of the leather side, fake leather side. Isn't that just lovely? Right, look. So you can wear it like that, or, which is how I prefer it, you can wear it like this. Okay, so I'm going to show you now how I will turn it into a bum bag. I mean, you can, you can do it any way that you want, but you put the two D rings, we've got two D rings on here, and I'm going to pass the tape through and then you pass it back through one and that's enough to secure it. Now you can finish this off and fold it back or you can put one of those stoppers on there but for the moment I'm just cutting it. Oh, a bit better than that though. Cutting it. So, and then for the other side you do exactly the same on the other side. Just get now I've been wearing bum bags since the 80s but I've noticed that DKNY for their spring summer 2013 have got bum bags so I don't know I think bum bags are going to come back again so if you want to be ready you make one of these gorgeous ones I've made mine with this embossed silver fake leather and this kind of purpley lurex fabric but look at these great examples of other people's bum bags If you want to make your own glitzy bum bag but you can't get hold of the materials, don't worry, I can send you a kit for just £10. All you've got to do is email me, tree at stitchless.co.uk and I can tell you all about it.